My name is Joel, and I wrote a book called 10 Essays on Fizz Buzz. To accompany the book, I'm making 10 videos on Fizz Buzz. Episode 10, Fizz Buzz in Tensor Flow. Fizz Buzz is the following problem. Print the numbers one to 100, except if the number is divisible by three, Instead, print fizz. If the number is divisible by 5, instead print buzz. And if the number is divisible by 15, instead print fizz buzz. Now, you may be wondering to yourself, how could someone get 10 essays worth of material out of this one simple problem? Well, stay tuned. So, you're the deep learning expert, huh? I wouldn't say I'm an expert but I've classified an MNIST digit or two. Great, well, I've got a deep learning problem for you. Fizz buzz. Oh, I think I read a blog post about this problem once. Let's do it. So to start off with, we're gonna need a data model. So, you know, I think we should probably use uh, named tuples. Why named tuples? I use named tuples for just about everything. They're compact, they're immutable, they're typed, you can add methods to them. They're basically kind of the perfect data structure as far as I'm concerned. And so I, I really love to use them for data modeling. So here I'd like to define a class to represent our FizzBuzz instances. Uh, so that will be a named tuple subclass. What does this instance need to have? Well, it will have uh, it represents some number n, which is an int, and uh, it's going to have some inputs that we're going to feed to our deep learning model, and that will be a torch tensor. So let's uh, import torch. And then finally, it's going to need to have a correct uh, label, which will be 0, 1, 2, or 3. We're treating this as a four-class classification problem, so 0 will be as is, 1 will be fizz, uh, two will be buzz, three will be fizz buzz. So this is what an instance will look like. We'll be able to train a model based on this. And the other benefit of name tuples, which I didn't mention, is that they play really nicely with the PyTorch data loader, uh, which is gonna help us out, okay? So now that we have this class to represent our instances, let's think about how we're going to uh, represent each instance as a tensor. And so we need a way to take each input n and kind of embedded in, in some kind of low dimensional space uh, in, in a way that's pretty sensible um, and that we can feed into our you know neural network deep learning model. And so one way that uh, I think is interesting to do that is to use uh, binary digits. So um, the binary digits uh, of n int, and I'll just hard code that it's going to be 10 digits because I want to use uh, 10 digits here. Um, that will be a, a good amount for representing numbers up to a uh, thousand, which is what I'm going to want to do. Is I'm just going to say um, digits are going to be, uh, and I want to convert them to floats because PyTorch will be happier if they're floats. So what will I do? I'll take n and I'll do a bit shift by i, um, and then I want to bitwise end end that with one. Okay and then for i in range 10, okay? So that's pretty uh, straightforward, uh, at least if you're used to doing bitwise arithmetic, it's pretty straightforward. And that will give you your digits, and then we just want to return uh, the torch tensor of those digits. Torch tensor uppercase is the type, torch tensor lowercase is the function, okay? And now um, we need also a function to construct the correct label. Uh, so again, we're going to take a number as the input, and we want to return an int as the output. And what um, what do we want the label to be? Well, again, if it's uh, as is, we want zero. If it's fizz, we want one. If it's buzz, we want two. If it's fizz, buzz, we want three. So here's uh, here's kind of a cool trick, which is we do the following: return one, three, five. 15 dot index 
of math.gcd of n and 15. Wait, math.gcd? That's right. I learned it from a video called 10 Videos on FizzBuzz, Episode 4, Euclid's Algorithm. Uh, it's a pretty neat trick. And so I'm going to need to import math in order that we can do that. And now, um, now we can construct our training data and test data. So let's say training data is going to be um, and actually, before we do that, let's write a function uh, called make instance for n, um, and that's going to give us an instance. And how is that function going to work? Well, we'll just say inputs will be the binary digits for n, um, and then, you know, label for n equals label of n. Unfortunately, I don't, I can't reuse the name, so I got label for n. And now I want to return instance of n inputs label for n okay so now that i have this helper function called make instance um so, so so what's our goal here our goal is to produce the fizzbuzz outputs for the numbers 1 to 100. we don't want to train our model on those numbers because that would be cheating so we'll train on the numbers from 101 to 1024 basically all the rest of the numbers we can represent with 10 binary digits and so what we'll do is we'll say uh training data is make instance n for n in range uh, I said 101 to 1024 okay and the test data will be make instance n for n in range uh, 1 to 101 so that's what we want to evaluate on once we finish uh, training our model okay so that's kind of all the preliminaries and now we're ready to start doing the PyTorch stuff. Um, and, and so, you know, for reproducibility, let's just set the torch seed manually. Um, that way, if we come back and want to run it again, we get the same results. Um, and now we need to define a model. And so what's our model going to look like? Well, we'll have a linear layer and then a nonlinear layer and then another linear layer with four outputs, which will represent our four classes. And we can interpret that as kind of, you know, if we soft max it, that's the probability over the classes, okay? And so we need to choose a number of hidden dimensions um, and, and I'll call it hidden dim. Um, and, and so let, let's make it a hundred. I, I, I think that's a pretty nice uh, number of hidden dim. And then what I can do is I can say the model is just going to be torch.nn.sequential of, okay? And so the first model is going to be a torch.nn dot linear where the n features is going to be 10 because that's how many binary digits we have as our input features and the out features are going to be uh let's call it hidden dim okay so a linear layer from 10 to hidden dim okay now i said we're going to do a non-linear let's just do a relu uh, that always works pretty nicely and then finally we need another linear layer uh, where the end features are going to be hidden dim. That's what we have coming out of the last one. And the out features is going to be four. Out features. Okay, so that's our model. Um, and we need a couple more things to do with this in PyTorch. Uh, we need a loss function. And we're just going to use, like I said, uh, cross entropy loss. That's... Uh, that's fine, okay, that's good. And finally, we're gonna need an optimizer. And so our optimizer, we will use torch.optim.atomw um, of model dot parameters. Okay, any questions so far? Hold on, who's Adam W? I actually have no idea. Adam West, maybe? Adam West? You know, Batman. 
You're using an optimizer named after Batman? <laughs> no, I think it's named after the actor who played Batman. Sort of like a Frankenstein, Frankenstein's monster situation. Anyway, now we can uh, write a training loop. Uh, and, and so let's say number of epochs, let's call it 2,500 is probably a good number. And let's define a batch size, uh, which will be 10. And then what we want to do is we want to say for epoch in range uh, num epochs, okay? And what do I wanna do? I want to track uh, epoch loss equals 0, 0.0. So we're gonna track the, the total loss over each epoch and hopefully that will go down over time. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to say uh, batches equals torch.util.utils.data.data loader um, of training data and batch size equals batch size, okay? Okay, so we're just gonna use the data loader because it, it's, it's super nice, I love it, it does everything right. Um, and then I can say for batch in batches. And what it's gonna do is it's going to batch things into name tuples with the same field. And so what I can say is uh, predicted, uh, well, let's, for each batch, let's do, um, Optimizer dot zero grad, so we zero out um, all the gradients, um, and then we can say predicted equals model of batch dot inputs. Okay, uh, so, so because of the way data loader works, it, it combines things. We can just do this. It's super nice. Uh, I love it. Um, it's genius. Okay, and so now what do I want to do? Um, I want to say that the error is going to be the loss applied to the predicted. And again, I can just do batch dot label because uh, it's going to have uh, put those together as well. Um, and I can say epoch loss plus equals error dot item. Okay. And then I can do error dot backward and optimizer dot step. Okay. And that's basically our training loop. And now what we can do is we can say um, at the end of each epoch, we can just print the epoch and the epoch loss. Okay, so uh, that should be pretty good, I think, uh, to train it. How long is this gonna take to train? I don't have a GPU, so it actually could take a little while, but while it's going, I can explain to you um, what it's doing. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this whole thing uh, and we'll be off to the races. So one way to think about Another reason I wanted to do a second edition of data science from scratch. even have whiteboards so I had to do the coding interview on a pad of paper and that's how we ended up doing unschooling then JupyterCon somehow accepted the talk which meant that now I had to But eventually it became clear that the Ron Paul campaign didn't even want a chief data scientist. And at that point, we pretty much had to start a podcast, if only to get revenge. So and if you just search on YouTube for WTC7, you can find videos that explain quite clearly that And which I suspect is the real reason that Google asked me to stop using TensorFlow.
but eventually we convinced the FBI that it was all a big misunderstanding. And it looks like it's done. Sorry for making you wait so long. No, this has been very educational. Great, so now let's evaluate it on the test data. Are you ready? I'm very excited to see how it turned out. Let's say that if you get 94 or more correct out of 100, you're hired. That shouldn't be too hard. So uh, we'll do with torch.nograd. So we'll turn gradients off. And then the number correct is zero. And we'll go through and count the number correct. So how will we do this? We'll iterate over for each instance in the test data. Okay, so what's the predicted? The predicted is going to be, we're going to apply the model to the instance.inputs, and then we're going to take um, its argmax, and then we're gonna pull the item out of it. Uh, so argmax will give us a tensor, we gotta pull the item out. Uh, the actual will just be instance.label, so that'll be zero, one, two, or three. Now we actually need some labels, which will be um, the string of instance.n, fizz, buzz, and, fizz buzz okay so that's good and now um what do we want to do when i say num correct we will do plus equal uh predicted equals actual so if the predicted and actual are the same uh we'll count that as one one correct and then finally we're going to want to print uh let's print um labels predicted and actually, first we want to print uh, instance.n, uh, labels predicted, and then labels actual. And you know what? The other thing we can do is we can say, um, yes, if predicted equals actual, else n. Um, and that will tell us which ones are right. Um, and then finally, uh, we can print out the num correct. 93. And don't forget to check out the book at fizzbuzzbook.com.